Hospice Palliative Care aims to relieve suffering and improve the quality of living and dying with people diagnosed with a terminal illness. It addresses the psychological, emotional, physical, spiritual, and practical needs of those people who are facing end of life. We get that question a lot. Um, another aspect of what hospice palliative care is, is to support the families and individuals facing end of life during loss and bereavement. Olson District Hospice Society began in 2007 when the question was asked, why can't we have a hospice in our community? There's about five women that gathered around that question and the response was, why not? Since 2007, there's been a group of people who have actually been investigating the possibilities of offering better hospice palliative care to our rural community um, in Olds and area. In 2010, we actually became a society and in 2011, we um, were granted charitable status. Since that time, we've assisted over 60 people within our community in their palliative care journeys. We discovered soon that having a building was not the only answer, that hospice palliative care is bigger than a building. Since 2011, there is a group of uh, individuals on our board who have been uncovering the services that already exist within our community and the community surrounding that offer hospice palliative care services. Our mandate was not to duplicate any services that were being offered, but to be aware of what was available. And as a society, we've been able to kind of address the gaps that we discovered and bridge those uh, services with what we call our model of care. We, as a society, put together a five-pillar approach to what our model of care is. We recognize that somewhere to go was a big part of what, the, what was needed in our community. For example, a contact base. Who do you call when you're diagnosed with a terminal illness? You've been treated in the cities and you return to your community and there's been a lot of care that's been offered. And now, where do you go and who do you turn to? We've had a lot of individuals um, call us and ask what they do and where they turn to. So it's so important to have a contact base. The second pillar in our model of care is a referral base. We've made it, like I said, a mandate to have uh, awareness of what services are available within our community and surrounding areas, including the urban centers. And so if you do need any kind of support, we have made it our business to know what is available for you and how to connect with these people. The third part of our model of care is one of the most important, and it's the ability to offer volunteer support wherever you need it, whether that's in the home, in long-term care facilities, or in the hospitals, wherever you're at. And in our case, that's Sundry Disbury Old. And um, be able to be there for you for what you need, whether it's respite care or sidewalk cleaning, if you need us to help make meals, that kind of thing. Our volunteers are trained in palliative care and they are there to support all those who are facing end of life and the family and friends surrounding. Our fourth pillar in our model of care is bereavement. Recognizing that with the diagnosis of a terminal illness comes many losses. So anticipatory grief is a natural part of palliative care. And then recognizing at the time of loss, um, we are there to support those who are um, left after your loved one has passed away with bereavement support groups that we offer twice a year. The fifth and final pillar in our model of care is uh, our commitment to communication and advocacy support. When I first started this journey with those five ladies in 2007, there was a misunderstanding about what hospice palliative care was. It became very important that education and advocacy for those who were facing end of life was a huge part of what we were committed to as Olds and District Hospice Society. And I'm grateful for the support of the board as we advance in communities across 
um, the county and also across Alberta advocating for um, good hospice palliative care and the awareness that rural communities need to have access to good hospice palliative care too. In the very beginning, some of the, the challenges that we have faced is that we are a small community and so the money that is available to the larger centers is definitely not available um, or it would be very difficult for a small community to uh, actually fund a standalone residential hospice, which is what we actually thought you know, we would like to do. We found that raising capital funds was very easy, but actually finding the money to sustain the projects is a lot more difficult. And there is no guarantee or no recipe through Alberta Health Services that would intentionally support uh, hospice palliative care um, and a residential hospice. So with that we had to do some brainstorming and come up with another option. And I truly believe our community service offering volunteer support within the homes is a, a wonderful service because I think people want to stay at home as long as possible. And if we can help them achieve that goal, then that is success to me.